The Steelcase Leap V1 was first introduced in 1999. By 2006, they had already launched a second version of their most popular chair. But is the Leap V2 actually better than the V1? Let's take a closer look and find out for ourselves. Likely the most obvious change on the Leap V1 is in the back design. When we look at the V1 first, the backrest is more of a mid-back height with a very pronounced curve at the top. The V2, on the other hand, has a much taller back with no noticeable curve at the top of the backrest. These two designs create a much different experience when seated in the chair. If you're a tall user or you just like to have full support throughout your entire back, including your shoulders, the V1 is likely too short. The V2, on the other hand, has no real issues supporting my entire back at 6 feet tall. From a comfort standpoint, I much prefer the Leap V2's tall back design for my height. Something else that was noticeable for my own use case with the V1 is how the shortness of the curve almost accentuates that lumbar feel when you lean back into it. When you really stretch back in the chair, it almost helps to stretch out the mid to upper regions of your back. I found that both the V1 and V2 have nice flexible backrest designs. This is a foundational component of the Leap series in general. Similar flexibility is also found in the waterfall front of the seat, which allows you to move around in both chairs and still feel good support throughout the seat and backrest. Because of the height differences in both backrests, how much the upper portions of each flex is fairly significant. With the lower back on the V1, you really don't notice that flexing happening quite as much, even when you really stretch out your arms. On the V2, there is a lot more movement felt in the upper portions of the backrest. The best part about this, though, is how well you feel supported through the entire back, including your shoulder blades, while moving around in the chair. If you do decide to add a headrest to the Leap V2, some of this flexibility does seem to go away. The headrest really just getting in the way and preventing you to be able to move around freely. The V1 and V2 cushion thickness is quite a bit different, especially for each chair's backrest. I found that the V1 has a noticeably thicker back pad on it than the V2. Now, while I do enjoy this thicker pad on the V1, my preferred version of the backrest for the Leap is actually on the V2. The V1 has a feeling like it's almost hugging you a bit more, making that chair feel smaller for medium to large frame individuals. The V1 also features a bit thicker seat pad than the Leap V2. The slightly different shape of the pad also accentuates this appearance of it being thicker. Now, the only issue is that most V1s, of course, will be from 1999 to 2006, and they will have lost some of this padding. So when compared to the seat of a V2, especially a new one, it's probably going to feel a bit more thin from being compressed down for so many years. There were a handful of changes made to the Leap's armrests from version 1 to version 2. The saying is that they don't make them like they used to really does apply here. With a steel construction for the upright portion of the armrest on the V1, it is very stout. Moving the arms up and down, the weight of the arms is noticeable, which isn't something we find on ergonomic chairs made today. The Leap V2 introduced plastics here, and while the plastic molds are nice, they aren't quite as solid feeling as the steel found on the original V1. When you apply a bit of weight to the armrest on the V1, they don't have any flexing that occurs. Meanwhile, with the V2, the arms don't feel quite as sturdy, but this comes with the territory for more modern chairs. One important thing I noticed right away with the V2 was the play in the vertical portion of the armrest was reduced, so this is an improvement here. While the V1 was sturdier overall, there is quite a bit more space between the inner and outer portion of the actual armrest vertical frame design, and this allows the arms to sort of rattle around a bit. Steelcase has an absolute lock on the best armrests in the business. Four-way arms found on the Leap V2 are also used on the EMEA and Think chairs. This armrest design wasn't something that came on the original version of the Leap, though. Instead, they included a three-way armrest, which actually for its time was quite impressive. Three-way arms on the Leap V1 offer a wide range of adjustment. Height, width, and a sliding pivot function are standard. Underneath the sliding arm caps, the adjustment guide for the chair is included as well, which is something that carried through the current Leap V2 design. The Leap V2 introduced an important motion though, depth. The four-way armrests on the Leap V2 are second to only the steel case gesture with regards to their adjustability. While the depth feature might not seem important to you depending on how you use the chair, 
The depth adjustment is crucial, in my opinion, to getting the fit right. And this is especially true if you're using something like a keyboard tray at your desk, you like to recline, or you just like to scoot up close to your desk. I think you can tell by now the armrests on the Leap are one of the more significant changes for the chair. The shape and feel of the actual arm pads themselves were also radically redesigned and for the better. The pads on the V1 are similar in construction to the pads on the Aeron Classic chairs from around the same time frame. Now, this was a three-piece construction with a plastic insert, a foam pad, and then a sock type system that was then stapled over the pad and plastic insert. This design created a rock hard exterior for the pads that were very durable, but not very comfortable, especially if you wanted to dig an elbow into them. Pads themselves are also quite large, which I guess can be a good thing if you want some additional space for your arms. On the V2, the arm pads are a much more sleek design, and I believe this complements the chair better instead of the ones like on the V1 that really stick out. The newer version of the pad is made of a one-piece PU pad that's molded right onto the plastic insert. I've also found that these pads are much softer to the touch, don't have any hard edges, and are really great if you like to dig your elbow into them. By now, you've probably concluded that there are many changes done to the Leap V2 that were linked to aesthetics and finding a way to lighten the overall chair's weight. The base design was another great example of this. The V1 had a more flat and round design that created a more dated look and feel. The V2 base has more height, sleeker lines, and is quite a bit thinner, creating a modern look for a chair that was designed 14 to 15 years ago. Plastics have come a long way, which has allowed many of the chair manufacturers to switch to a lighter nylon plastic that creates a sleek look for bases. The Leap V1's base is an absolute tank built from steel, which is something that isn't commonly found on standard-sized ergonomic chairs anymore. This heavy design wasn't the prettiest though, with the cheap plastic cover used over the top to hide that steel structure beneath. The Leap V2, on the other hand, uses a heavy-duty nylon plastic design, which creates a more streamlined look. Even with this change to the plastic, I believe that Steelcase has kept their weight capacity of the chair at the whopping 400 pounds because of the durability they've seen from this product. They even warrant the Leap V2 for 24-7 usage. If this is the type of scenario you plan to use with the Leap, I might recommend the V1 over the V2, though, especially if you're going with something without a warranty. Hopefully this has helped you better understand the Leap and the evolution of the Leap. Check out my next video where I share my experience after using the Leap V2 for the past three years. Thanks for watching.